Hey, Lee Robinson here at American Civil K9. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you're having a blessed day. If you like the content in this video, please give us a thumb up or uh, subscribe or share it. It helps the algorithms and helps our channel grow. In this video, I'm going to discuss what we've done to get to where we are with American Sentinel K9. We have people from time to time reach out to us and they want to know what does it take to build a successful program and not to toot my own horn, but uh, we are a successful program. We've been uh, breeding our dogs for 22 years. We've got dogs internationally and our dogs uh, work very well. Um, all programs are going to have obstacles from time to time, but Fortunately for us, things worked out pretty well, and uh, we've continued to move forward and make progress every year. Um, that said, don't think it's going to be sunshine and roses. Uh, it's, it, there's a lot of hard work. For those of you that don't know, I was a school teacher and a professor at a community college. I always just considered myself a professional educator, but whatever. Um, and I also drove a bus at a high school, so I did that for 25 years. I've got my time in and I've retired. But those 25 years of, as a professional educator and bus driver is what basically financed the development of the American Sentinel Canine Program. It was a lot of hard work. I would go, as an educator, I'd work 45 to 50 hours a week because the bus driving was an additional eight hours or so a week and I was easily putting in over 40 hours a week sometimes 42 sometimes 45 sometimes even 50 so by the time you got to added the bus driving it was definitely a 50 hour week any, any week and uh, then you come home and you've got a yard full of dogs that you have to take care of and so that's an additional 20 hours plus uh, that's what it was for the first 10 years and the last 10 years it's been an additional 30 hours so I've been putting in uh, 70 to 80 hour weeks for the last 10 to 12 years and prior to that I was putting in 60 to 70 hour weeks and since I had my years in as an educator and was able to retire I, I decided with the stress that I, I put my body through working 70 plus hours a week it was time for me to hang it up and, and do the canine full time so that's where I'm at. Uh, I'm hoping to take our program to the next level. But if you're interested in developing a, a breeding program, the best advice that I can give you is not only to get a professional education and go out to get real experience, but one of the other key factors is to team up with a program that's already being successful, whether it's my program or somebody else's program. Team up with a program it's already successful so you don't have to do it all by yourself we did it pretty much not all by ourselves because we had supporters that would help us train but when it came to the breeding stock I really was self-reliant uh, I had a, a lot of dogs uh, I went out and acquired the best dogs I could find not just dogs in the neighborhood I wasn't breeding with my buddy's dogs just because they were there I went out and looked for the traits that I wanted found the best dogs that I could find and I paid for them. And I had to do the work and I had to travel and I had to do the study. I selected breeds that were known for the traits that I desired. I found bloodlines that were known for the traits that I desired. I looked for breeders and people that were trustworthy, as trustworthy as I could find. And uh, they selected for the traits that I desired. And then I selected individual dogs that displayed those traits that I desired. And by building a population of dogs, I didn't have to worry so much about that branch breaking that I was standing on because I was flying with my own wings. Yes, again, I certainly had support from people. You know, I've always had a group of people that have been very kind and supportive to us and without them it would be very difficult maybe I wouldn't have made it um, so I certainly give thanks to you know a lot of individuals out there to name a few right off the top of the head, my head Prentice Wallace and Keaton Temple without them I wouldn't be where I am today so uh, you still need, need people even if you try to be independent but if you team up with somebody it's just going to make your life so much easier because you don't have to have 20 or 30 dogs. You don't have to have that independent population to build that, that gene pool. 
you can work with others. Maybe you'll only have two, three, four, five, ten dogs. You know, honestly, if you only have two or three, it's going to be pretty difficult even working with people unless you have like ten people to work with. Because if everybody has three dogs, it takes ten people to have thirty dogs, and I've got more than that by myself. So. Uh, it's really expensive, you know. I, I, the first ten years of my program, I easily invested over a quarter million dollars easily into our program. And uh, since then, it's yeah, I've uh, probably spent much more than that because my food bill right now is about twenty grand a year. But I sell dogs, so that offsets those expenses now. So now, you know, it's money in, but it's money out. So you know, it's. I'm profitable now and I don't have to rely on my education income to supplement my uh, hobby business. And I say hobby business because it started off as a hobby and an interest and it became a business. Now when I graduated uh, college perhaps I could have gone into canine full time and made a living. There certainly have been people that have done that. But I was kind of naive about that world at that time. Yes, I had experience and education. I wanted a dog that would benefit my life through the training that I provided. And so, yes, there's benefit in training, seeing eye dogs for other people, but I don't need that for myself. So, yes, I could get money, you know, for those things and I could use that, but I still wanted the dog to just have the skills. I wasn't going in it for the finances at all. I was going into this because it was something that I enjoyed and it helped me have a relationship with a canine companion that uh, would, was built in a way that it benefited the dog and me both. It was a mutualistic relationship, cooperative relationship. Um, so that's what I was seeking when I started training. And if you want to build a, a breeding program, find somebody to work with. That's the best advice that I can give you. And know that you're only going to get out of it what you put into it. So if you want great stock, go get that great foundation. If you just use neighborhood dogs, you might have success for one generation. But there's a reason why most band dog programs think the F1s are great and after that not so much. And that's because they don't have that genetic foundation that they need. And then they don't select and cull, select and cull, select and cull to refine the population each generation to build that gene pool that you need to really sustain a program that endures the test of time. Most band dog breeders are gone within five years or less. And the few that make it past that, I only know of maybe one, maybe, I don't even know if it's still around, that's made it 20 years. I think maybe one, maybe two. Uh, I know some people that have had band dogs for 20 years, and that's why I say maybe, but they really don't have a program. They got like two or three dogs, and they just let them get old, and then when they before they become sterile, they breed a litter, and they're not really building a population that's going to live beyond their lifetime. Uh, and they're going to have to have an outcross because you can only inbreed so many times before you have inbreeding depression. So that's not really what I'm doing. I'm trying to build a breed that is the ultimate family companion guardian. The American Sentinel is supposed to be a family companion guardian. Yes, we do hog hunt with them uh, to test their grit under extreme combat, but their purpose of the dog is to be a family companion guardian. And of course, they're capable of doing other things too, if canine sports are your protection sports or your thing, give them a go. But anyway, that's a few thoughts that I have here for the day. Y'all have a blessed day. Again, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and share. Y'all take care.